You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm your host, Pete Newsom, and my guest today is Marshall Hilleman. Marshall's a re- recent graduate of Florida State University and is now a graduate assistant with the Strength and Conditioning Program at Northern Arizona. Marshall, thanks for getting up early and talking to me today. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank you for the opportunity. I am great. I am great. So how, how long have you been in Arizona? Um, I just moved out here about a month ago. So I just literally just got here. So I, I asked you to come on today uh, to give our listeners a, 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 a very bit of a different feel than a lot of the guests we have on. So, of course, our podcast is intended to talk about career success, how it happens, how people become successful. But you know, when I'm talking to a lot of folks who are, let's say, a little farther along in their career like I am, uh, the stories tend to sound the same. And you know, for, for people closer to your age, I think uh, they become a little skeptical of our memories and the way we t- you know, talk about having to walk uphill both ways to get to school and, and all of those, those stories that are, that are cliche. But I'm excited to talk to you because you're living this right now. You are uh, really at the beginning of your career path, but you've already done a lot to get there. So if you don't mind, I, 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 want, I want to just talk through that today from the time you know, when I first met you when you were in high school and how, where you are now and where you, where you want to end up. How's that sound? Absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, let's start at the beginning, man. You, you grew up in Tallahassee, Florida, right? Yes, sir. So I was born and raised in Tallahassee. Um, you know, the goal is always go to Florida State, play football at Florida State. That's a dream you have as a kid. Um, ended up in high school my junior year. I actually moved to Orlando. Um, Finished out high school down there. Didn't have any offers come out of high school. Um, you know, I was at a smaller school. My film wasn't great. I wasn't the most athletic. Um, I had one interest from a small school called Southeastern down in Lakeland, Florida. So that was kind of the route I took. It was at about 5,000 kids. Football program was really good at the time. And so I chose that route. Um, some things happened in that semester, you know, with some family. And ultimately, you know, it was, we just couldn't afford to go there anymore. Um, so I had, I had literally had one option that was to move back to Tallahassee and live with my grandma. So I lived in a, in a little tiny twin bed in the corner of one of her rooms in her house, just kind of for eight or nine months, just trying to figure out, you know, what my life was, you know, my parents were really going through it. So I didn't really have, you know, much support from them. So I was kind of on my own for a little bit. And once I got back up to Tallahassee, I got a good job at a Gold's gym and I was going to community college, um, taking, three or four classes, just trying to figure it out, figure out how I was going to do things. And I figured, you know, if I'm in Tallahassee, I'm at least, you know, train and try to, you know, make this dream a reality and play at Florida State. So ended up working at Gold's. Uh, I was going to community college, ended up getting another uh, side job on the weekends bartending just so I could make some extra quick cash. And I did that for about two years. So that was kind of how I started. So it's safe to say that your dream of playing for FSU wasn't looking like a given at that point. Is that, is that pretty fair? Yeah, I, would, I would say at the beginning when this journey first started, like when I first went back to Tallahassee, I mean, I literally didn't have much of my bank account. Like I was living with my grandmother, taking like three classes at community college. You know, you go from playing college football to going to community college, working two jobs. I mean, that's know, not, that doesn't there. look like you're heading in the, in the, the direction you wanted to at that point. Right. Of, of, <laughs> yeah, of, no, of putting on a Seminole uniform. Yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't looking good. It, it was hard for a year. You know, there was a lot of doubts I had, especially when I was training. I'm like, you know, is this really going to happen? I had a lot of doubts for, you know, a good solid year of, you know, whether or not this would actually be a reality. And, you know, I did my best to make it a reality and did what I could. So I know a little bit about that world, having gone through um, the same sort of uh, hopes and dreams with, with my oldest son, who, who you, of course, know. And, uh, you know, the world is, that world's pretty harsh. There, the, uh, there's, there's not a lot of hand, there's no handouts, there's no one to, um, uh, to help you do it, to do the work. You have to do it yourself. So, so a year's a long time at that point. It's a pretty lonely place to be, I would guess. Yeah, it was hard. And, you know, because I applied, actually applied to Florida State four times before I actually got accepted. And I was denied all four times. So, you know, every semester I was reapplying and I kept getting denied. And it was kind of one of those hopeless feelings of like, you know, is this really going to happen? So that was really crushing. So that, that really year, year and a half period was long. Um, it was hard. It was just, you know, put your nose down and work. And it was literally say a prayer and see if you can, you know, make it. And, and I know you did a lot of that. I know your faith is important to you. Um, something Absolutely. that you make um, you know, very public 
And I, you know, do you think that that played a big role in, in, in helping you, you know, stay the course? Absolutely. Um, I, you know, I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer in um, where you are is exactly where God wants you to be. I'm a big believer in, you know, God will open the right doors at the right time and his plan, his plan and his purpose will, you know, come to play. And it, it was a big teaching moment. It was a humbling moment for a year two year period of just learning to trust God and learning to just be where your feet are and trust the process. And, you know, during the time, you know, you're a 19, 20 year old kid, you know, you hate going through it. But, you know, now I'm 24. I look back at the journey. I'm so glad that that journey happened because now I have a testimony to share with other people and encourage other people and motivate and inspire other people of who are in similar shoes, you know, similar dreams that I had. So many young, you know, young men, young, young women who want to play uh, your dream of playing sports at a higher level are in that in that position and and it's not uncommon for them to work really hard that's a necessary component of it and 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 to pray and it still doesn't always work out so what what turned um the tide for you where where did where did you get uh you know the, that opportunity how did it come to fruition so i actually uh had two tryouts i tried out in 2019 when i first got to florida state um so i got accepted that summer and i had a tryout with them um dominated the tryout killed the tryout I uh, thought I did great and um, came very close to the defense coordinator at the time, Coach Harlan Barnett, who's now at Michigan State. But uh, me and him hit it off well. And he said, hey, you know, I really like you. I'm really impressed by your work. And uh, he gave me a report. He said, you know, August 26, why don't you come to the office? You know, we'll get everything squared away and, you know, we'll go from there. And showed up August 26. It was a Monday morning. Um, waited about all day long just to hear from somebody and finally got to talk to the guy that I was supposed to talk to. And he comes up. He says, hey, you know, I don't have any paperwork on you. you know, I don't know. Um, got no information on you. you know, you're going to have to come back in January. There's nothing to do right now. And I was crushed because so I was like, you know, I waited really two years for this opportunity and I finally got it. And I was told, you know, that it was going to happen. And then, then a you know, snap of the fingers, it was gone. Yeah. Within, within so, seconds, it, it just gets taken yeah. away. Needless to say, you didn't, you didn't see that coming on that day, right? You no, thought I you were walking in to, 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 to be exactly yeah. where you had been working to end up. And, uh, I didn't know I didn't know that part of the story until now. I mean, what did you, you know, what was your mindset then in that moment? I remember I looked the guy in his eyes. And I said, you know, thank you for the opportunity. And I didn't really know what else to say. I, I looking back now, I wish I would have just argued and like try to say like, hey, listen, I was told to be here. But I don't know. Like it just it was like a knife in the chest. And I was like, you know, just, you know I just said, thank you. And I remember I went home, uh, sent a couple of text messages, people just let them know. And I remember I cried for like just a week straight. And I was like, what am I going to do with my life? You know, <laughs> what am I going to do? So I remember I said, okay, I talked to a couple of people in the next couple of days and I gave myself a week. I said, you know, I'll, I'll have a week to decide of what I really want to do. I said, if a week comes later and I feel like, you know, God's leading me down a different path, then, you know, I'll go down a different path. But if he, you know, if I want to give it one more shot, I'll give it one more shot. And I remember I gave it a week. And the next weekend, I remember I wrote down like a list of like eight goals. And I said, okay, I'm not going to make this if I don't hit either of these goals. Um, so one of them was like a GPA. One of them was uh, just athletic performance. Um, you know, so I wrote myself my own workout program. That's kind of how I really got in the strength and conditioning, had a passion for it. So I got with the right people and I said, okay, if I want to be this speed, if I want to be this strong, if I want to be this size, what do I need to do? So I wrote out my own program. It was about 18 weeks long which gave me to about second or third week of January once I finished it, which was perfect. So I was around the next tryout was. So I wrote that and I remember uh, it was fall 2019. I mean, right. I, I literally tuned the whole word. Out. I said for 18 weeks, I'm just going to go as hard as I can. So I was working two jobs again, um, going to school full time. And then I was like, waking up like five o'clock in the morning to go work out. And I was doing, you know, 14, 15 hour days, just back to back to back to back to back for 18 weeks. And eventually, um, you know, it was hard. It, I mean, there was some dark days in those times. It was like, you know, because eventually, you know, Willie Taggart got fired that season, you know, mid-October. And when that happened, I'm thinking, you know, who's going to be the next head coach? You know, are they going to have a tryout? Are they going to bring on walk-ons? So that was another thing that was up in the air that would really test my faith, which, you know, is this you know, really going to happen again. Well, and, and I want to set the, the, the tone of, of the timeline for anyone who's not as familiar with the college football season and what, what we're really talking about is you walked in and in, in 2019 of August, 2019, thinking you were going to be on the team that season that you would earn yeah. 
the right to play that fall season when the, when college football takes place and you were effectively turned away unceremoniously, right? <laughs> Never to be heard from again, potentially. And then you had to recommit, uh, go, you know, basically start from scratch, right? When, and, and go and, and, and back to the well and just try again. And, and it took you know, what, how many, how many months? We said 18 weeks. So between August and January, while the season's going on, that you're yeah. in no way part of the team or the organization, you had to stay focused or refocus all over again. That's just an incredibly challenging and frustrating thing to do. I mean, I, very few people would, would, would have that kind of fortitude. Yeah, it, it was hard. It was very challenging. And then the only the really thing that really kept me going was, okay, if I train this hard for X, Y, and Z days and X, Y, and Z weeks, even if it doesn't happen, I had faith that there'd be a purpose within that for some reason. And then now I look back and I say, okay, now I have, you know, kind of two, you know, testimonies about it. But now, now that I have that program written now, that was what kind of led me down this path to where I am now. Because now I have the knowledge of how to, you know, properly train, how to properly use technique, how to properly program stuff to, you know, make a kid faster, stronger, bigger. And now I use a lot of that knowledge where I am at now. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that um, while you're you know, you're fit, strong, athletic guy, you're not six five. You know, you're not you're not three hundred pounds. You uh, presumably uh, you didn't run a four two forty. Uh, you know, I know you were fast, but I don't think you were that fast, right? And uh, did, you, I went, did you did you run a four two forty? Huh? I went four four three. Okay, so I mean, yeah. listen, this by kind of fast. by any standard, that's fast. But we're talking you know, playing at the highest level of college football for sure, and, and having to make the team um, that uh, you know what you, you didn't you didn't, it certainly wasn't a red carpet that was laid out for you, especially given what you you had to go through in, in that fall. So so what happened when January came around? So January rolled around. I remember I think it was like January sixth or seventh, which was the first Monday of the school year. And I said, I'm going to show up every day to the front office at 8 a.m. when they open. And I'm going to say, hey, I want to try out. So Coach Taggart right was gone, right? That new coaching was staff, had, had, did, did, uh, was Coach Norvell in place by then? He had just gotten hired like, like a week before. So, th- so there was a whole cluster of just commotion going on in the office because they were making so many new hires. So not, nobody was working up there. So and they by were, the way, like a- COVID <laughs> just started. Yeah, COVID was was a, a factor in that because now that you got a rumor that this virus is going to shut everything down, which it did. But I remember I showed up for it was about a two week process where I showed up every single morning at like eight a.m. right when the doors open. I said I want to talk to somebody about walking out, walking on, and they didn't have anybody at the time that had any information on. It. So finally, about two weeks later, um, they had hired a grad assistant who I guess was in charge of that. He said, um, yeah, "Let me get your information." This, that, and the other. And they hired another guy a couple of days later. Um, I was up there again for like the third week in a row. And he brought me back to his office and said, listen, like we're playing a tryout. We're probably going to have one. It's going to be the first week of March, right, before spring ball. He says, you know, we'll get you more information on it. And then a couple weeks later, they posted a flyer about it. Um, so at that point, I was like, okay, if I want to – if really want to impress myself, what do I need to do? So I remember – and this is just a tryout. This is one of those things you just show up. like, And they may take nobody, right? They may take a, a couple – for guy, I mean, I, I've Maybe, read some stories of these tryouts that that aren't. It's it's not very promising when you show up for them. No, no, like they're looking for tackling dummies. They're not looking for anything special, right? Which is hard. It's a hard reality as a walk on. You know, that's what you got to deal with. But I remember, I think it was March second was the tryout date. So I, I remember I wrote another six week workout program. And I was like, okay, for six weeks, this is what I'm going to do. Deload week right before the tryout, and then tryouts going on. I'll be peak. Boom. So one of the things that I did that I felt like was very important was uh, we had a meeting right before the tryout. And I remember I got a folder together and I said, okay, if for some reason I make the team, they're going to need X, Y, and Z information. They're going to need transcripts, doctor reports, paperwork, all this stuff. So I went online or actually went up to compliance. I said, hey, you know, if I were to have an opportunity, what would I need? She gave me a list of all the paperwork, and all the stuff and information they would need. So I went home printed off all it was like six or seven things and they needed so and i had actually had to go to the doctor for it just to get some stuff signed off but i wanted to be as prepared as possible so that if my opportunity came they wouldn't have any questions so i put together um, a folder had all that information in it and the day of the tryout meeting i gave it to him and i remember i looked at me i said hey I'm, I'm ready to go this is all the paperwork that you need and he looked at it and he said okay you know, well you know we'll see you march 2nd we'll go from there 
So, so you so things. you effectively filled out your new hire paperwork, right? If, if we if we equate this to a job, the new hire paperwork before you even interviewed. Yes, pretty right. much. <laughs> which, which no one ever does. So uh, I love it. That's great. So keep going. Yeah, I mean that's just how kind of determined I was. I was like, you know what? If I'm going to do this, like I, I want to leave no trace and say no doubt that I wanted to be here. I remember I even uh, wrote like a three page like paper of like why I wanted to be here, and I put it in there, and it was for Norville. I don't even think he ever read it. He probably didn't, but that was just well, he, under something. He, just to, we should get him. To, he should read it now it. if he has it. Um, I love it. Yeah. So, but um, so that's commitment. No, so I tried out. <laughs> it's commitment for sure. For sure. Um, but I remember, I mean, I committed to myself. I'd been through this for two years and I was like, you know, I'd committed, I'd been so all in for it. And I was like, I want to leave no doubt, leave no trace. I want to go 110% into this thing. And then, you know, tryout day rolled around. It was March 2nd. Um, I remember I showed up, well, there was probably maybe 40 kids. And I had just from being up in the office, I knew a couple of people out there. So they knew I was coming. And I remember the, one of the first things we did was the 40. I was saying, okay, I, I have to run fast or I'm not going to make it. What was the number that you, you thought you had to run? You I was thinking I would at least have to run four or five. Okay. I yeah. was thinking four or five. I was like, okay, if I run four or five, I'll be in good hands. And I remember I got up to the line. I ran the first one. And there, you know, there's only like, there's two people, you know, they got their hands out and they're just holding the top the stopwatch. I remember they clocked me. And as soon as I passed, I just hear this, whoa. And I'm thinking, okay, I must have ran something decent, so I'm in good hands. So I remember I, I finished through the 40. And I remember I stopped, and I went to turn around. And Coach Dillingham, Kenny Dillingham, who's now at Oregon, is running like a full-on sprint at me with, like, this big smile on his face. He comes up to him, and he goes, hey, man. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm like I don't know what – like, what do I say to this? And he's like, stick his hand out, and he goes, what's your name? And I said, Marsh Heilman. And – um. He just looks at me and he goes, do you, do you have any idea what you just ran? And I said, I, I honestly have no idea. And he goes, you ever played running back before? And I said, I, 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 I literally looked at him. I said, I will play offensive line for you. I don't care what you want. I just want to be a part of this program. <laughs> and I remember he just, like, he just smiled at me. He, he wasn't even saying, he just smiled at me. And he goes, okay. And he's like, that's great. He's like, go run another one. So I go to run another one. And when I go, <laughs> When I go to run this one, there's probably 15 people at the 40 yard, like with their hands out with a stopwatch. And I'm like, oh, now they're paying attention. The most, yeah, I'm like, this is probably the most pressure I've ever had on in my entire life is to run another 40. I think I went 447 on the second one. And then after that, when he came back up to me again, and then he just, he, I remember he followed me around the whole trial. We had some other stations and he followed me. And, um, after the tryout, we did like a conditioning test. And I remember I was like, okay. I've planned for two years to be on this team. I was like, nobody's going to beat me on this conditioning test. And I remember I, I passed the test like 40 yards in front of everybody else. And I was like, okay, this is good. And I remember um, after that, you know, there wasn't much said else. And I just shook a couple hands and just to thank for the opportunity. And they said, you know, hey, you know, if you, if you make it, we'll give a phone call in the next probably couple of days. So that's all we can tell you. I remember. It was actually the next day I was getting ready. Uh, I was going to a, um, uh, one of my classes it was on like, on like voting. And I'm, I'm like, I'm like, my, my one thing in my mind is like, okay, I'm just going to class. I'm not, it's going to be three or four days before I get a phone call. I'm not worried. I remember I literally walk into class. I sit down and this random 850 number calls me. I'm like, should I, should I answer this? And it's a random number. Like, you know what? I'll answer it. And I'm, I'm sitting in class. Class hasn't started yet. And I pick up the phone. And it was Coach Locke at the time, who's also at Oregon now. It was the shortest conversation I've ever had. <laughs> and he just – he calls me. He goes, hey, you're like, Marshall, like, this is Coach Locke. He goes, listen, you want the guys we selected? He goes, don't post nothing. Don't say nothing. I need you to come to the office, fill out some paperwork. And he goes, show up tomorrow at 5 a.m. And he, and he hangs <laughs> up the phone. And I'm like, I'm, I don't even know how many – I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to do. So I just walked up to the football office, filled out some paperwork, and they're like, yeah, show up tomorrow at 5 a.m., don't be late. And I showed up tomorrow and and that's it. at 5 a.m., and that was it. <laughs> You're on the team. Congratulations. And having had a couple conversations with Coach Locke, I can completely envision how that call went. Um, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, like, here's the thing. Be here. here. And that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it, it was maybe all 20 seconds. And, like, that was how I found out. And I was like, 
I don't even know what to say. So I just I went up to the thought of my paperwork and I show up the next day. Man, that 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 is so cool. And the the fact that you had to perform you get you, you, you know, quite literally one shot at that. And if you if you don't, that's it. You you know, where they will never see you, you know, again and you know, just going in it, not being on their radar screen at all, um, man, you, you had to stand out and you did it. So that, that is that is a you know, that, that's a great that's a great lesson, I, I think, because you know, a lot of kids who, as you know, want your know, dream of playing you know, college athletics, and just because you don't get that opportunity right out of the gate, just because you weren't heavily recruited, there's so many reasons why that could happen. Uh, doesn't mean you should give up, and if that's your dream, as you're describing, it took you years to 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 achieve it. Uh, but by not giving up, you. you you know, you accomplish what you set out to do, which is, which is really, um, you know, an admirable thing. So you, you made the team you're, you're on. And, you know, from what I could tell from, you know, seeing pictures and, and seeing you on the sideline, looks like you enjoyed it. Uh, it looks, it looks like it was, yeah. it was worth the, the wait, right? There was a lot of always big yeah, smiles was, on your face. It was unbelievable. I know that first year was weird because COVID hit. So I literally made the team. And then a week later, we all got sent home. So it was like, crap, well, I just got here and now I can't even be a you know a part of it. So we went home for, you know, two and a half, three months. And yeah, because spring football summer, was canceled we, after a week, right? Yeah, we had one week of spring ball and then boom, it was all canceled. But I remember we got back for summer and everything was up in the air. The season was up in the air. Um, there was a lot of moving pieces. The workouts were a little bit different because nobody had been working out. So that whole period, even that season was just very odd, you know, just with COVID protocols, you know, there wasn't any fans. It was just very strange. So I didn't really get the real experience until the second year when I was there. That's when it really hit. I was like, okay, I'm really doing this now. That's when it really got fun. Yeah, um, it, that was a strange time to, to be a student, to be to be an athlete, to well, to yeah. be a citizen. Right? I mean, to be alive. For it sure. was a strange. It was a strange year. Um, yeah, I, it, as I just said, yeah, yeah, I always would see you and, you know, at the front of the pictures and just fully, it looked to me like you fully embraced every second of, of, of that. Just like you said, you weren't going to leave anything unsettled and, and it looked like you, you kept, you carried that through to your experience on the team as well. What, tell me how you went from player Marshall to coach Marshall. Because I, I saw that transition, but I don't know that story. I've, I've you know, just followed your progress on, on Instagram for the most part. Yeah, so going into that year two phase, um, I was really – that was when I really turned it on. And I really was like, okay, I, I want to play. Like year one's over with, all, you know, all the honeymoon phases are over with. Like I want to play. So I came in the next year, um, spring ball, a couple of days before the spring game, I got a concussion. So I missed the whole spring game, which was, you know, pretty upsetting. But, you know, you know, it's, it's football. It's what you sign up for. It's things are going to happen. Um, so that was kind of one of the factors that played into it. So that was kind of a long healing process. I healed a little bit longer than what it took. Um, summer workouts, you know, just really that year, I just built a very good relationship with the coaching staff. It was more of those, you know, I was always in their office. And even, you know, to talk more than just X's and O's. You know, just talk about life. Talk about – their families, my family, my journey, their journey, and just making relationships and building that foundation with them, I felt was very important to me. So I made sure I did that with the entire staff and um, fall rolled around. It was actually week two of the season. I got another concussion, um, got it in practice, and it took me about four weeks, almost five weeks to even really kind of even remotely heal from it. I mean, I was in a bad spot for really two or three weeks, just really battling some tough symptoms. Um, I wouldn't even allow it at practice. I wouldn't allow it at games for a good three weeks just because oh, wow. the severity of it. So I was out for a little while, and it got to the point where, like, I couldn't even work out because my heart rate got too high. I would just want to pass out just because, you know, I had a lot of pressure built up in my head, was dealing with a lot of stress. And I remember I think it was the end of week four going into week five, because so I had to check up the doctor weekly and uh, the week prior, you know, I'd asked him, I said, you know, um, kind of, we you know what's your healing process, you know, what is it going to take for me to really get back? And he goes, you know, well, honestly, next week will be kind of a tell all. So I went back next week and I, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, I had to list him all of my symptoms, what I was going through. And I, it was one of those things at the same time, I can't 
you know, BS around. I have to be brutally honest because this could be something that could seriously affect me and, and my career long term. I remember I laid out all my symptoms and we talked for a while. And, you know, I kind of asked myself, you know, at what point is this too much? You know, we had kind of hit it off for um, just a little bit of conversation. And, you know, he eventually came to me. He's like, hey, listen, like, it's, it's probably best that, you know, you probably, you know, hang this up and move on to something else just for the stress fact factor, just for um, relieving a lot of these symptoms, just for getting a lot off your plate. So it's probably help you out a lot if you just, you know, hang this up and move on because, you know, it's obviously dangerous because if you were, because I remember if, if I were to have the opportunity of come back and play it again, I would have went 10 times harder because this would have been my last year and like, I want to see the field. Sure. So I would have went, you know, head everybody trying to, you know, dog my way on. So I probably would have got a third one, which would not have been smart. No. But, you know, he was, you know, you know, the severities of, hey, you know, if you get, you know, even two, four months apart is not good. But if yeah, it's a big third, deal. That's, that's bad yeah, stuff. He was saying, if you, know, if you were to get three within six months, you could actually be, you know, having severe damage that could affect you long term. And we talked about that for a while. And it was a very hard conversation. And he just put his hand on my shoulder and he was like, you know, listen, you've had a great career. You got to do what a lot of kids, you know, didn't get to do. And, um, signed some paperwork for it. And that was kind of, you know, the decision we made. And I went upstairs and this is kind of how my coaching career got off. And I went upstairs and, um, coach Fuller, he's the defense coordinator there. They were in a staff meeting and I was like, crap, I got to, I walked in, I know they were in a staff meeting. I'm like, dang, I got to tell the whole staff this right now. I remember I told him in front of like 20 people, and, uh, he just looked at me and said, Hey, he goes, you know, take a week off, he goes, go home go get he's like get out of here like go get out of Tallahassee go do something else with your life for a week he says if you want to come back and work in a week he goes you let me know so I came back in a week I said hey listen like I, like, I want I want to go I want to be a part of this I want to you know embrace this new role and so I became the signal caller so you know you see on the sidelines you know you got the guys in usually different colored shirt that are calling in the plays at, with all kinds of hand signals with the headset on so that's what i became i was a defensive signal caller which honestly i had a lot more fun doing that than i probably would have been killing myself at practice because i really enjoyed it <laughs> that's a little easier on the body because well yeah but every game i mean you're on the front row in the fire calling all the plays it's like that was really cool it was a lot of fun it was a lot of learning um, you're around the staff a lot more, so you're you know just building relationships and learning a lot more. So that was really cool. The other thing was, you know, Coach Storms let me continue to work out with the team. You know, once I had started to heal a little bit again, I could actually be active. He let me be a part of workouts. He let me be a part of the team, which was really cool. So uh, you know, it's always sort of been your thing, right? In, independent of football, I know you, you you take a lot of pride in in, in strength and conditioning, and um, both for for performance, uh, you know, as well as just overall health. So, what um, you know, how did you make that transition from you know, from the field and and decide this is something you wanted to pursue? So I actually I wanted to be a football coach when I first graduated. That was what I really wanted to do. I was asking around, seeing for opportunities. And throughout my career at Florida State, you know, I was, I was very um, – I, I always did well with strength conditioning. I always did well with and performed well in that aspect. So me and Coach Storms built a very good relationship. He almost turned into like a second dad to me while I was at Florida State. So we always had that relationship. But, you know, when I graduated, I really wanted to coach football. Um, the dream was always be a head coach and just move my way up. And – Actually, you know, Coach Marv, who was with us, actually took the defense coordinator job at Virginia Tech. Well, first of the year, um, you know, we had been back and forth texting, and he actually gave me a call, and he said, hey, listen, I got a GA spot open for the DBs. Um, uh, talk to these guys, and, you know, we'll get the ball rolling from there. And I remember, you know, we talked. I talked to both the other DB coaches, and I was hoping for about a two-week period before, you know, I'd hear something. And I was pretty much set on going to Virginia Tech just because after our conversations, it was looking pretty promising. And he called me about two weeks later and he said, hey, you know, our head coach, you know, wants to go with the kid from Virginia just for recruiting purposes. Because, you know, as you know, college football is big on recruiting nowadays. So a lot of these big power five programs want to recruit within their state. Yep. So especially him being his first year, he wanted to recruit heavy with in Virginia. So that his rule obviously overrided Coach Marv's rule, so that kind of shot me down. I still keep in touch with him to this day. We actually talk, you know, every other week. But 
um, that was kind of one of those things where God closed the door on football. And I remember I, I talked to Coach Storms about it, and he says, you know, why don't you come work for me? So that was when I really got into it, and I interned for him in the spring for about four months. And if you know anything about intern work in the sports world, it's like 80 hours a week for free. And, yeah, it's like, not glamorous. Work. <laughs> oh, no. Like, I remember it was like you got there – some days, I mean, I was there at like four because we had stuff at like five or six a.m. So, so a lot of those days you're there at four a.m. and you're not leaving until, you know, seven, eight at night. I mean, it is long days and it's just you're doing all the work nobody else wants to do. Yeah. And, and that those guys, from my understanding, uh, end up putting in significantly more hours, as you're describing, than the athletes. But they yeah, they get they're really you know, quite literally you no know, glory. Of course, the team, the organization appreciates them. But I don't think fans really realize all the behind the scenes work that's necessary to support a team who plays at that level. Oh, it's brutal. It's ugly. It's not fun. But at the same time, you know, that's kind of how you earn your way in this industry. You know, in this industry, nothing's earned and it's all got to be stuff or nothing's given. It's got to be stuff that you earn. And well, and your reputation, is right, is, is everything sure. too. And, and so that has, to, that has to be built along the way. And, and um, you know, because I, I, would, I don't have any firsthand knowledge of this, but I would have to assume based on being a pretty, pretty big sports fan over the years and just watching how things go down, that most jobs are happen because of who you know and, and what you've done and, and your, you know, your reputation certainly um, is everything. So uh, you know, putting in that time now you know, is, is how you build it, right? Absolutely. And a lot of those times you know, when you're starting off, first getting your foot in the door, it's all about relationships. And it's all, you know, if you make a good impression on somebody – you know, they never know. They could take a job and they could take you with them. They might know somebody. You know, it's kind of my situation out here is just um, somebody knew somebody and I had a good reputation with where I was and they made a phone call for me and now I'm here. Um, and, you know, I, we completely glossed over this, Marshall, but you, when you were on the team at FSU, which is a full-time job, you were also going to school. So you're, you're a full-time student, full-time athlete, and you would leave football practice and go work at night. Uh, which hardly, I mean, that no one does that, right? I mean, you, you that's an anomaly yeah. to say the least. So how, how many hours were you working outside of football and school, like, you know, to, to earn, to earn income? Um, it was roughly 20 to 30 a week, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it was a decent amount. And I was going Monday to Friday. Um, so obviously we practiced in the morning at Florida state. So I was at the facility at 6 AM. So I was up at five 30 every day. So we'd have practice. I wouldn't leave the facility till about one. I'd go to class from one until, you know, three 30 and I'd go to work from, you know, four till about nine, nine 30 every night, get home, make dinner, do homework. It's, you know, 11 30, 12 turn around, be up at five 30 again the next day. So it was rough. It was hard, but at the same time, I loved it. I love what I did. And all, I mean, I had to work. You know, there wasn't anything, you know, as a walk on, you're not getting all the scholarship stuff that all the other kids are getting. So yeah, that's, get the, job, so. That, yeah, that's, that's something that you know, should, you know, I don't want to gloss over it. You, know, it's, you can't under, uh, overstate that, you know, with, with some exceptions where, you know, everyone on a football team like that knows kind of where they are in the pecking order and the likelihood of getting on the field. And it sounds like you had an opportunity to do that your last year before getting hurt, but the year prior, you're doing all that with, very little expectation that you're going to get to play. And so you're doing this for free. You're, and then you're having to go work to pay your bills after afterwards while, you know, keeping your grades up as a student. I mean, it's, it's a lot. It, it's a lot. And very few do that. I mean, college athletics is not college athletes aren't, aren't supposed to go out to work after practice. They're supposed to recover. It's hard. Yeah, no, it's hard. It was, it was a lot on the body. I definitely felt it, especially towards the end of the season. Just because I was on my feet all day long, especially when I got to work, I was another on my feet for another five or six hours, and then you know, I was at a gym, so I'm moving more weight, so I'm burning more. I mean, it was hard. It was it, it was it was a lot of pressure. It was a lot of a lot of work, but you know what? I embraced it because I knew that eventually, you know, this would be a part of the journey, and it, it was worth the sacrifice for sure. One of the things that is a theme from the interviews I've done so far, although this is still a relatively new podcast, is that. If you find something that you would do, whether you received income for it or not, whether you're paid for it or not, that that should be the goal that you know to really immerse yourself in and to commit fully something that you'll 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 do whether money's involved or not. And and you found that thing, 
And so you were you, you really all the work you did um, out of out of love for it and desire to do it, it set you up to to be in the place you are now, which is to continuing you know, to pursue that dream and to actually live the dream after college of staying in in in, in football and college athletics. So um, you went out to Arizona. Do you know anyone in Arizona, <laughs> or did, uh, did you just pack up and go when the opportunity came? I, I, I literally packed up and just went when the opportunity came. It was one of those, you know, I couldn't turn down. So quick overview of kind of how I got here. So uh, it was it was actually at Pro Day. Um, I had saw an ad for in this position here, and I asked Coach Storm, hey, you know, do you know anybody? He goes, yeah, I know the head coach there. It's like, oh. I was like, you know, this could be a good, you know, collaboration. So we literally send the head coach a text. I got a phone call two days later. I got an interview the day after that, and I got the job the third day. <laughs> so that's kind of, you know, how quick, you know, this works. But, you know, how the kind of the backstory of that is. So the head football coach here, his name's uh, Chris Ball. He was the defensive coordinator at Memphis when Norvell was at Memphis in 2015 okay. and 16, I believe. And then prior to that, they were all together at Arizona State back in 2014 and 13. So there was a big tie. There was a big connection with their, their coaching tree here. So it was literally one of those things where they made a phone call, boom, boom. Next thing you know, I'm packing my bags, and here I am. That is awesome. Um, and, and all the work you did you know, set you up for that success that you're having now. And so, well, look, you, you, you still have a long way to go. Right, you're very early in in this curve. Where where is this path going to lead? Where do you want it to lead? Well, you know, I'm only a grad assistant. You know, this is I'm 24. I'm pretty I'm a pretty young grad assistant, so I'm working my way up young. Um, in regards to you know athletic performance and strength, you know, um, I would love to do is try the NFL just to learn. I don't think I would want to be there the rest of my life, but I would love to learn from the highest level. I would learn to love to learn from the most elite athletes in the world, how you train them, how you maintain them, um, how you keep those guys healthy. It's a lot of things that you know, I'm intrigued by, but eventually I would love to be, you know, a head strength coach in the power five, you know, a big time power five school, um, just working with, you know, the Rolls Royces of athletes, you know, especially at the collegiate level, you know, just guys that are just, want to work, hungry to work, eager to work, and, you know, just build these guys up and make the best product you can for them so that they're ready to perform on Saturdays. Is it safe to say you're willing to, uh, to keep grinding for as long as it takes to, uh, to find, uh, to achieve your goal? Absolutely. But, you know, another thing is, you know, obviously in this industry there, there's a lot of money. But, you know, the money doesn't really mean anything to me. The money, you know, it's just one of those things that comes with it. But, you know, I'm more excited for the opportunity to just meet new people, go to new places, go to new schools, go to new cities, you know, experience college football, experience life, experience, you know, different culture, especially out here. You know, you go from you know, the southeast to the southwest. You know, it's a different culture out here. You know, they do things differently. There, there is a lot of money. I mean, co you know, coaches at a high level, even you know, assistant coaches, staff. Yeah, I, I see what those salaries are. They're um, they're 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 giant. But I don't think anyone who who ends up there did it with that in mind. And the reason the reason I say that is because that's years away. That that is, I mean, and, it, and it's not. It doesn't start off high, right? I mean, there's only a few, um, you know, relatively who who get to that point. So you don't you don't go into it for the money because it certainly doesn't come early. It, um, for sure. And I, I kind of really like that, that uh, premise because only those who've earned it, as you said earlier, you can't, there's no one can just can that to you. No one would do that with a coaching job. That's not how it works. You need to build that mm -hmm. history and, and success and reputation over time. Um, but it, it, it's, it's not a quick climb. It, it can be a long one. It could be a long journey. I mean, for some, it works better than others. You know, sometimes, you know, a lot of it's just playing your cards right. You know, a lot of times, you know, people get offered, you know, different opportunities and, you know, they take jobs at the snap of fingers. And, um, but, you know, some people wait, they wait their turn. They wait, you know, you know, their process and their purpose and they, you know, they figure it out and they get with the right people, the right coaches and God opens the right doors for them. Well, I'm going to, if I were betting, I would, I would put my money on you. I'll, I'll say that everything I've, I've watched you that. do, 
hearing even more about it today. Um, you're, you're doing it the right way, Marshall, and and it's admirable. And and I'm really glad uh, you know, that I was able to hear more of your story today. Uh, but there's one more question I want to ask you, which is, what advice? Even though you're still you're still living it yourself, uh, what what advice would you give to others you know, slightly younger than you, around your age, um, that uh, that they may find you know, beneficial to hear? Um, you know, one of the biggest things I learned, especially in college, was you know, if you, if you truly want something, you'll find a way to make it happen. And even if it doesn't happen, you will learn from that experience, and you will learn from what you went through to ultimately something bigger and better. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in God opens the right doors and he closes the right doors. So what you learn throughout your time and your process of chasing your goals and chasing your dreams may not be exactly what you think it's going to be, but learning in that process and that due time is ultimately going to prepare you for what you're going to need and where you're going to be. So um, that's a big one that I like to do. And the other one is just staying ready, always staying ready, always being prepared, you know, because you never know when your moment's going to come. You know, I took this job on literally about a week notice and unpacked my bags, moved across the country. So it was one of those things where for four months I was ready at any moment. I was ready for my time and that time came and I was ready, especially even playing football, you know, watching film, being ready physically, you know, always being ready for that opportunity. Even before I tried out, you know, having a folder with all my information and just staying ready for that opportunity is I feel like is a big key just so you're prepared for it. Man, I think that's a great message. And I think that's a perfect place to close. I don't think we're going to get better than that. So it is, it is awesome advice. Thank you again for getting up early. I know you're probably, is that the weight room behind you there in the, that I can see? It, from is, your shoulder? it is, you know, behind me, they got some, some, I don't even know what they're doing. They got construction crew in here right now. So they said they just built this facility. It's a new uh, $50 million facility. It's which oh, wow. is crazy because it's, it, it's nicer in a lot of power five schools. Really cool. So, well, you know, well, good. We'll put uh, we'll put up a link to, uh, to. I'm sure there's pictures uh, for the facility, so we'll put a link. There's a um, there's a video on YouTube that they 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 go through the whole thing. So I would definitely check. I can send you a link for it. it cool. Is we'll, very cool. We'll put that in the show notes. That's really neat. I, I look forward to seeing it. Well, thank you so much for getting up early. Thank thanks for sharing everything today. And I'm going to be watching you, man, and and look forward to to seeing uh, your success over the years to come. So, Marshall Heileman. Thank you very much. And everyone listening, have a great rest of your day. Mr. Newsom, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh-huh.